The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Not only have our media corporations been funded and owned by high-end Illuminati elites and puppets like the Rockefellers and Robert Maxwell since their inception, but this same system of control also remains today. Even outside of the United States in nations such as the United Kingdom, a handful of Illuminati cabal billionaire elite puppets own all media corporations. These media corporations receive huge amounts of their funding from major trusts and foundations and from major corporations through advertising. The level of infiltration is outstanding and all you have to do is follow the money and you will find the same individuals and foundations at the top. And most people understand and recognize this. The problem is, is that many believe this level of ownership and control primarily extends to the reach of political bias and stops there. For example, it is well known that Harold Evans, a former editor at the Sunday Times, made it very clear to the Leveson Inquiry how Rupert Murdoch interfered with the content of the paper. Evans was often rebuked for not doing what Murdoch wants in political terms, including when reporting on the economy. But again, the scandal of injecting political bias into reporting is just another form of theatre. Remember, the Illuminati elites own it all. And in reality, right and left are just two wings of the same bird. What most do not realize, however, is the extent of infiltration in our global media and the staggering reality that the media was created with the intended purpose to control the masses. In 1948, Frank Wisner was appointed director of the Office of Special Projects, which became the espionage and counterintelligence branch of the Central Intelligence Agency. Wisner was told to create an organization that concentrated on propaganda, economic warfare, preventive direct action, including sabotage, anti-sabotage, demolition, and evacuation measures, subversion against hostile states, including assistance to underground resistance groups, and support of indigenous anti-communist elements in threatened countries of the free world. Later that year, Wisner established Operation Mockingbird, a program designed to influence American media. In the beginning, Mockingbird was created and led by Wisner, Alan Dulles, Cord Meyer, Richard Helms, and publisher Philip Graham of the Washington Post. Their main focus was to interact behind the scenes with major media outlets and get reporters on the CIA payroll. The agency had them all in their pockets, ABC, CBS, NBC, Time Magazine, Life Magazine, Newsweek, Associated Press, United Press International, Reuters, Scripps Howard, and Copley News Service. William Shapp, world-renowned legal scholar, author, and university professor, did much to expose the role of the CIA in popular culture, showing that it spent one-third of its budget on media propaganda operations. As publisher of The Lies of Our Times, Shap showed that the CIA owned 250 different media networks across radio, television, and the newspapers. William Casey, the director of the CIA during the 80s, famously stated, We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. 
Richard Keeble, Professor of Journalism at the University of Lincoln, explores the relationship between the UK media and the nation's secret services in his book, Close Encounters of a Strange Kind, a critical history of the links between mainstream journalists and the intelligence services in the UK. He quotes Roy Greenslade, who has been a media specialist for both The Telegraph and The Guardian, as saying, most tabloid newspapers, or even newspapers in general, are playthings of MI5. Richard Keeble states that Block and Fitzgerald, in their examination of covert UK warfare, report the editor of one of Britain's most distinguished journals as believing that more than half of its foreign correspondents were on the MI6 payroll. And in 1991, Richard Norton Taylor revealed in The Guardian that 500 prominent Britons were paid by the CIA and the now defunct Bank of Commerce and Credit International, including 90 journalists. David Lee, former investigations editor of The Guardian, wrote about a series of instances in which the secret services manipulated prominent journalists. He claims reporters are routinely approached and manipulated by intelligence agents and identifies three ways in which they do it. 1. They attempt to recruit journalists to spy on other people or themselves attempt to go under journalistic cover. 2. They allow intelligence officers to pose as journalists to write tendentious articles under false names. 3. The most malicious form. They plant intelligence agency propaganda stories on willing journalists who disguise their origin from readers. Robert Maxwell, father of Ghislaine Maxwell, owned the Mirror Group newspapers. He was also a triple agent for the CIA, MI5 and Mossad. Anderson Cooper, a prominent CNN anchor, apparently interned at the CIA before assuming his role at CNN. As if anyone can just intern at the CIA. And he is also the son of prominent high satanic priestess Gloria Vanderbilt. Similarly, there is a striking coincidence in the time frame from when the Pentagon DARPA run LifeLog operation was shut down and when Facebook was launched. LifeLog aimed to gather in a single place just about everything an individual says, sees or does. Out of this endless ocean of information, computer scientists would plot distinctive routes in the data, mapping relationships, memories, events and experiences. This is in essence the same thing as Facebook. The LifeLog project was cancelled by DARPA on February 4th, 2004, the exact same day that Facebook was founded. They want you to believe some loser geek invented Facebook at Harvard, when in reality it was born from the secret military industrial complex. Disguised as social networking, it is a subtle propaganda machine of control influence, data collection and surveillance. Again, all of this points to infiltration instead of invasion. They know, as of today, and I say as of today at this hour, uh, we have 33 confirmed positive tests for the virus. Yesterday we had 22 cases, today we have 33 cases, so it has gone up by 11. Uh, that brings, those are 11 new cases, uh, 22 goes to 33. As we sort through this here uh, in Arkansas, uh, today uh, I, we have 33 confirmed positive cases in Arkansas. Uh, as of today, we have 33 confirmed cases uh, with Boston residents. We expect those numbers to climb. As of th this afternoon, we have 33 Pennsylvanians who have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, so as of this morning, there were 33 confer uh, cases in North Carolina. Good evening to you. Lots to get to tonight. I'm Leon Hendricks. We want to start with new information into our newsroom. Within the past couple of hours, there are now 33 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Michigan. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the News at 6. I'm Richard Gearhart. Karina Corral has the night off. More cases of the coronavirus were confirmed today in San Luis Obispo County, bringing the total number now to 33.
Right now, Georgia is reporting a total of 99 cases in 19 counties. That is 33 new cases from just yesterday. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Swenson. More cases and more events affected. Here is the latest coronavirus news. There are now 33 cases in Louisiana. As expected, the, as expected, the, the number of cases of COVID-19 jumps. A total of 33 people in our state have been tested and are confirmed to have the coronavirus. Day four of the shelter at home order brought six new confirmed cases of the coronavirus to San Luis Obispo County, bringing the total number to 33. All troopers will be professional, polite, and will treat everyone with dignity and respect. These latest steps as the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Rhode Island jumps by 33 overnight. If your email inbox is out of control and you've given up sorting it out, a Baltimore company thinks it has a solution for you. Could this be the end of email overload? 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 Could this be the end of your email overload? Could this be the end of 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 that email overload? Could this be the end of 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 email overload. Could this be the end of email overload? viewers um, is a wonderful scene. Um, these are uh, Muslim mums. Um, there's a little fella here uh, who's bought a little sign and this is in commemoration. You can see his little sign to the heroes of London. Uh, there are flowers on the street here. Um, ladies with hashtag turn to love, hashtag ISIS equals enemies of Islam, hashtag ISIS will lose, hashtag turn to London and I think uh, a poignant scene and a scene we should sit on just for you viewers uh, to understand exactly how people feel here on the streets of London so close to what were such brutal attacks last night. The supposed coincidental headline and update echoes between news anchors and reporters sounds very scripted because they are. Just in the same way the ethnic inequality stand was staged in London. The media complex is a highly compromised industry that ultimately has the most power over the entire world. It is in the grips of the Illuminati, compromised secret services, a select handful of billionaires and carefully disguised plants. Whatever they say, we believe. It is truly the most powerful entity in our world and its grip extends far beyond journalism. On the 18th of October 2019, a high-level pandemic exercise called Event 201, hosted by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, gathered some of the big shots of the world to run a simulation and plan in the event of a global pandemic. They used the example of a coronavirus. What foresight they had! Even the stuffed toys they handed out on the day looked similar to the media's representation of COVID-19. In segment 4, they discussed communication strategies. They began with a mock news report and then discussed how to control and disseminate information. Here is a clip. 
Okay, others, yeah, Jane. Yeah, so can, can I uh, agree with that? And my fact, it did come from the Edelman Trust Index, you'll be pleased to know, <laughs> um, but also borne out by the work I've done as a CEO in my time. Can I also add that I think there are real technology opportunities here. I, I personally do not believe that trying to shut things down in terms of information is either practical or desirable. And we do have, I think, a, a couple of strategies that are available to us, one of which is the flood strategy, second of which is relying and informing and equipping trusted uh, sources of information with the facts so they can then pass that on. But we also need to actually think about a technological answer to this. So there is work that's being done to actually create algorithms to sift through information on these kind of social media platforms. Um, and I know that uh, the Gates Foundation and others are funding organisations to work on things like this in order that people can actually have more confidence in the sources that they will use in any event. Um, and then another issue, I suppose, is, is just through that, if you have a trusted source, I believe in the idea that we shouldn't be trying to um, control communication, but rather flood the zone, in a sense, with a trusted source that then is <coughs> influential community leaders as well as health workers, as Brad noted, and others on these issues in order to try to amplify the message that's coming through. And flooding good information. So I think one of the ways that we need to approach this is to make sure that we have the right representatives on traditional media networks in order to uh, portray our side of the story and make sure that there, there isn't um, misinformation. That's a manifestation of flood. Chris? Oh, sorry. No, I think a, a complementary uh, tactic too is to, to tap faith-based organizations <coughs> and civil society and other institutions to recruit them also to, to, to basically, almost at a grassroots level, continue to, to basically have the integrity of, of the information. The champion for TB in South Africa was Nando's Chicken. And so I think as we think about these large atypical players who have no credible vested interest in, in this issue but have a strong voice that's economically differentiated for their... You see here they talk about flooding the zone. This is a propaganda technique in which the government officials, the media and others literally flood our zone with the same messaging. It operates on repetition to create a consensus of belief. It can instill both fear and reassurance and works to shape our understanding of the world. They also talk about employing trusted voices to enforce their messaging. Trusted voices primarily take the form of organization officials, spokespersons, celebrities and famous individuals in whom we trust and admire. That's why Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom York are great puppets to promote action for climate change, another silly hoax. And Beyonce and John Boega lead the way to enforce dangerous, divisive social movements like Black Lives Matter. We have seen so many celebrities from Lady Gaga, Piers Morgan and many others reinforce the importance of following the rules during the COVID-19 pandemic. Celebrities and Hollywood stars, as we have seen, are complicit in the satanic Illuminati complex and they have everything in the world, but there will be times when they are called upon to do the work of steering our minds in certain directions. It is these same tactics of manipulation that we see in the coverage of Flat Earth. Throughout the last five years, as Flat Earth was gaining popularity and people were beginning to question the absurdity of living on a giant spinning space testicle, many took to social media platforms such as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter to collectively start exploring the notion that our Earth is not a globe. Let's examine the media's response to this and the use of trusted voices. Instead of you going backwards, like you talk in the book about how we now have to <clears throat> listen to people saying the Earth is flat. Yeah, uh, yes, that, that's, that's one of the pieces in there is about the, the new... Uh, the new Flat Earth International Conference. It isn't a conference from the 14th century. This is a conference that started, I think, in 2017. And it is a growing thing. And that's because people are so contrarian, people are so willing to believe unsubstantiated things that have websites, that they are now going back on the conclusion we have all rightly drawn about the shape of the planet we live on. <laughs> And that people are sort of going, and by people I mean idiots, <laughs> are saying, I, I'm a questioning person, so why am I going to go along with this idea that the world is round? Well, I'll tell you why, because people went up in a rocket, <laughs> looked out of the window and took a bloody photo. <laughs>
theory. Put aside the fact that we've taken photographs of it and you can see a horizon. And not only can you see the horizon, but you can see things move behind the horizon or in front of the horizon, depending on the height that you choose to look at the things. It, it, I, I, yeah, I, you see, I'm lost for words. It, it's, it's probably the most nonsensical suggestion that, uh, that a, a thinking human being could possibly make. It is drivel. In the Middle Ages, what shape did people think the world was? Clat. I know we all think they did, but there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever. They all thought it was round, they all wrote about it as round, the Greeks knew that it was round. Round and flat. No, round. they thought it was a sphere. The Greeks knew it was round, he says. Chaucer knew it was round. Roger Bacon wrote about the curvature of the Earth in the 13th century. You see, almost no one in the history of the world has believed that the Earth is flat. I was watching a documentary recently about flat earthers that was fascinating. I don't know if anybody saw this. There are people who believe the earth is flat. The documentary is called Assholes. You must ask yourself here the question as to why these trusted voices are all saying the same thing. Flat earthers are not only wrong, but we are stupid, idiots, assholes, nonsensical, full of drivel. Why the hate directed speech? It is very interesting to me that the trusted voices tend to be celebrities admired for their so-called wit and knowledge. You see, their manipulation of the public here is not actually subtle. Anyone with common sense would question their heated response. Why does it matter if some believe the earth is flat? Ask yourself, would David Mitchell, Stephen Fry or Brian Cox talk this way about religious groups who believed in so-called archaic notions such as God? They are being paid to say this. Their response is not scientific at all. It's panic. It primarily revolves around ridicule and outright rejection. Any real scientist may actually find the notion of flat earth intriguing. They may want to investigate further and enjoy this kind of discussion and debate. But no, flat out rejection from the globe heads. And it is not because Flat Earth is preposterous, it is because their entire careers and comfortable satanic lifestyles are at risk if they do not comply with their handler's wishes. They must act as a trusted voice. But this wasn't enough to stop the Flat Earthers, and more and more people are waking up. And to combat this growing awareness, the matter went to Congress. Downs, does Google think that this is a problem and what is the solution that you're coming up with to address it? Thank you for the question. So as you noted, uh, when Alex Jones posted the video you described saying that the survivors of the Parkland massacre were crisis actors, that violated our harassment policy. We have a specific policy that says if you say a well-documented violent attack Understand. didn't happen, and you use the name or image of, of survivors or victims of that attack, that is a, a malicious attack and it violates our policy. In terms of conspiracy theory content generally, our goal is to promote authoritative content to our users. So we have two principles that guide the way here. That's the first one, is we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. information. Downs, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, I only have a minute and a half, and I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I wanna know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box out. saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. Again, ask yourself, if Flat Earth is false and a conspiracy theory, why is it specifically being discussed in Congress? Did they also discuss Bigfoot and aliens? This is Juniper Downs, the global head of public policy and government relations for YouTube. The Congress session dressed itself up as attending to the matter of disinformation, when in reality it was a call for censorship. Furthermore, when trying to view this video on YouTube, you receive this message. Let's look at the ways YouTube censors Flat Earth. 
First and foremost is the manner in which they use algorithms to promote manipulative content debunking Flat Earth. Miserably might I add. All of the content on the first page focuses on debunking Flat Earth. Videos such as destroying Flat Earth without using science. Not even debunking. Destroying. Look at this vice feature on Flat Earth. Look at the cover photo. It already sets the viewer up for rambles of what appears to be a crazy man. Based on what they're showing us, it seems very fake. When we're being presented with things like the moon landing footage, and you've only got to look at it with a critical eye to see that it's done on a set. Is the moon fake news? No. But does the moon have fake news surrounding it? Yes, absolutely. Of all of the celestial bodies, it's the one that would most indicate sphe 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 sphericity, is that the right word, being spherical? And therefore, it's used by people like NASA to prop up the notion that we are live living on a, sph a sphere also. So it's used to perpetuate fake news. And what about a Guardian feature on the so-called Flat Earth Society, titled Meet the People Casting Aside 2,500 Years of Science? Oh! mother of all conspiracies is surely the flat earth. There is no curvature on this earth. It cannot be measured. I'm wondering if you could describe to me your circumstances when you started to look into this. I've spent the last 15 years looking for truth. My midlife crisis about that time. Everyone gets to that point in their life, you know, around about 40 odd, that you start wondering, you know, what is this all for? What am I doing here? How did your family take the news? <laughs> My son went off and did his own research, came back and he said, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And my ex-wife actually thinks I'm crazy. She thinks I'm, uh, I'm mentally ill. Mm. It's not craziness. It's li literally what a true scientist should be like. Should be open to, to everything. Before you became a flatter, did you feel part of society? No, increasingly I've removed myself from the society because it's a wicked society. It's evil in places. You just have to turn on that hypno box, you know, in the corner every night and you'll see, you'll see the wickedness. And what about the BBC's coverage of this topic? We used to think when we got started individually in this, that we were alone. We have one thing in common. We live on a flat plane. When you're watching videos at home, it's just you and the screen. And it's lonely. I came here because I needed to see what flat earth people looked like. And I was not disappointed. They look normal. Very few people overweight. About 30% of them are cigarette smokers. And only four of them that I met are from around here. Can you see what they are doing? They are creating a false narrative to promote a false demographic of people that believe the earth is flat. Primarily fringe outsiders shouting in unhinged waves on the streets. People having midlife crises who have lost their wives or dress ridiculously, but consider themselves normal. The media are generating a perception of the type of people who would believe the earth is flat. And it is highly manipulative and plays into the concepts of what Charles Bukowski called the genius of the crowd. The predictable propensity in people to always side with the masses out of insecurity, for fear of being rejected and ridiculed. No one would want to associate with a demographic of people that are represented as outsiders on the fringe of society. If the majority believe something, then most will follow. It applies to many things in life from trends, reviews and critical acclaim, and to political beliefs and world views. People are attracted to the mass opinion. No one wants to be associated with a flat earther after watching these videos through fear of being laughed at, or they will stop in their exploration of flat earth because the media represents a community as a collection of fringe or insane individuals. It isn't glamorous or even given the intellectual recognition it deserves. There is no in-depth discussion of the science behind the flat earth model. 
just a false demographic narrative. The media here intervene to stop people even giving it a chance. YouTube pushes this content to the forefront. Another selected video is titled, How Average People Fall for Flat Earth. What do they mean, average people? They are patronizing us and playing the same tired hand of promoting bamboozlement as some kind of exclusive genius that the ordinary folk cannot fully grasp. YouTube's content fluctuates between making fun at the so-called flat earth idiots, aggressive debunking videos and comedy sketches where people ask, if the earth is flat, why does no one fall off the edge? Flat earthers have never once said that there is an edge you can fall off from. And this type of redundant humor is enforced with memes. If you Google search flat earth, not only do the algorithms push forward similar content, but its image search is filled with satirical images that misrepresent the entire argument put forth by the flat earth community. You see, terms like flat earthers and flat earth community create a false idea that there is a unit of people that all hold the same specific beliefs. I am using it in this video for the sake of argument, but in reality, flat earthers are just people digging for the truth, all with very different views and conclusions drawn from extensive research. But back to YouTube. They also censor searches when looking for something more specific. Here I type in Eric DeBay, a prominent flat earther and one of the smartest people I have come across on YouTube. YouTube promotes two of his current content before flooding the zone with the same trashy pseudo-scientific debunking videos. You see, they can't be too obvious in their censorship. Furthermore, when typing in flat earth, users are greeted by this sinister push at the top of the page. This is what Juniper Downs was talking about in her response to Congress. It is an insert from Wikipedia. Just an innocent bit of context to this field of inquiry that stresses that flat earth is an archaic, outdated mode of thinking about the world. If you type in Bigfoot, Aliens, Universe, you are not greeted with any such context box. Why not? And it doesn't stop there. YouTube has attached this sly context box to all prominent YouTube channel videos. And more sinisterly, YouTube removes flat earth videos, bans them, depopularizes them by removing likes and subscribers to people's channels. People have had their channels demonetized. Making videos is a lengthy, arduous process, and especially in relation to flat earth content, it requires a vast amount of research, time, and effort. And yet YouTube deems it appropriate to defund these channels, but at the same time, allows other YouTubers such as Jeffree Star to rise to fame. Near the butane. Amazing. We're gonna put up a picture of me and Nathan just so you can stare at us while I get high. Be right back. Screenshot where someone on her wedding video, which this is like your special day, honey, asked, I bet you Jeffree Star is at home watching this. I'm actually not, baby. I'm busy running a multi-million dollar uh, company or maybe five companies and I'm a little busy over here filming and just, you know, living my life. But someone wrote, I get, um, Jeffree Star is probably at home watching this or something like that. I'll throw up a screenshot right now. Um, and she, Miss Thing had to write, Jeffrey who with a wink and I'm like That's all you can say Jeffrey who how about Jeffrey that had the lipstick uh, in Sephora with my motherfucking name on it with your company For the last 10 years. How about Jeffrey? That's in all your books all your memories like girl because she was always a friend that had the nicer stuff and um Jeffrey Star is an online makeup personality whose videos further intensify society's growing vanity and self-obsession and who frequently talks about others in denigrating ways, pointing out their supposed ugliness and who promotes hypersexualized content such as the Orgy Collection. You see, Google, YouTube and others like Twitter are not truly social media platforms. The way they behave with their censorship actually classifies them more in line with publishers than platforms. You must really consider why the trusted voices, government officials, mainstream media and social media publishers of our world are censoring and desperately trying to debunk and delegitimize Flat Earth. It is panic. They've been talking down new sources of energy. They dismiss wind power. They dismiss solar power. They make jokes about biofuels. 
They were against raising fuel standards. I guess they like gas guzzlers. They think that's good for our future. We're trying to move towards the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, They, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, That's worth reporting, but you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. In other breaking news, the world is round, not flat. Flat Earth should not have been a subject in a presidential speech. Why doesn't he reference UFO believers or other so-called groups that fit into the camp of conspiracy theorists? You see, the term conspiracy theory was actually invented by the CIA and flooded into circulation via the media during the 1960s. As Lance D. Haven Smith outlines, the term conspiracy theory entered everyday language in the United States after 1964, the year in which the Warren Commission, an investigation into the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, and was used by the New York Times on multiple occasions during its coverage of the investigation. How convenient! The term conspiracy theory was practically invented and established as an everyday phrase during the investigation of JFK's murder. You see, the real conspiracy theorists actually believe that the government officials and trusted voices care about them and would never lie and that the media would never mislead or lie to them outside of political bias in the same way they believe that the pharmaceutical industry, which makes billions from the sickness of the people, want to really cure them. Really think about the amount of money that gets thrown around via foundations and charities for health, and all the so-called scientific progress we hear about, and all the while all we see is people getting sicker and sicker. They are lying to us. The attack on Flat Earth is nothing but panic. Their biggest fear is an awakened public. A symptom of a larger problem. There's a growing anti-intellectual strain in this country. That many, that it may be the beginning of the end of our informed democracy. They are right when they shout about it being a threat to democracy. But not our democracy. It is a threat to their democracy to their freedom of greed, elitism and satanic practices and which all exist due to and depend on our brainwashed ignorance. It is not democratic to censor free speech and ideas and it is not democratic to demonize people for holding a view that is not in line with the general misinformed consensus. They are relying on the genius of the crowd to make people feel like they are either crazy or stupid for even being curious about looking into the true nature of our earth. You see, Operation Mockingbird never ended. These talking heads manipulate us and tell lie after lie. We download their ideas from our screens and into our minds only to become echo chambers of opinions and viewpoints that were never really our own in the first place. We go about our day to day echoing and regurgitating their lies and views of the world as if they were our own. The programming is so subtle sometimes we don't even realize we are doing it. There is an attack on free thinking and it is being led by the number one enemy of the people, the satanic elite and its media and trusted voices and education system. Out of this entire series, this is in many ways the most important thing you could take away and raise your awareness to. I used to be extremely brainwashed and breaking away from this sick matrix of lies is the best thing I ever did. But come on, enough of this. We have to get back to flat earth. We have to understand the mechanisms that make it all possible in the first place. Come with me now to episode 10. It's time to talk about energy.